All right, I am going to do my best job to tie a lot of what has already been said and then piggyback it on some of the things I would like to say. Um, and I'd like to start with the underlying principle that makes things like what Annie and Mike did or what I have done or what you have done or what you're going to do. The underlying principle is in all of this, you didn't have to ask anybody. And that, that's huge. That's the difference in why societies get ahead and why societies sit there and look the same as they look for 2,000 years is do you have the right to take an idea and go do it? Now, what I'm talking about is your right to the water that you're using or going to use. And let, let's take how we're sitting. I love, I love how things happen randomly and how you sat. This is the state of Alabama. And each person is sitting on their farm, which is a irrigated farm. And then you've got this wall over there is Georgia. That wall is Mississippi. There's a main river that runs down this walkway that never runs dry. And there's one over there like that. It all pools up down here. And where you're located are meandering streams that may run all summer, may not. You can see over here, there was two things over here. Um, there was easy water to access and you started first because the next guy saw his neighbor doing something so he said, hey, that looks pretty good. I think I'll do the same thing. So that's why there's more people sitting right here irrigating because the water was easier to get. Down here you've got municipalities, uh, wildlife refuges, you know, make up something but we're not farming right here. But right here sits by the most water in the whole state because all the water in the state's coming downhill. So it all works right here. And then you've got the, these farmers right here um, got what I call the low-hanging fruit. You located your farm right beside that main channel of water that never runs dry. No one came in here. It's either too far to pump it or there's no way to get it there. Everybody in this room is sitting upstream or downstream from somebody. The, this gentleman here is going to have a greater effect on his stream based on what everybody behind him does. counter that with he's got more accumulation of water when it goes by him or through him than the person on the back row. All right, let's see. All right, let's, let's start with Joe over there. On Joe's farm, there, there's enough water in this... Uh, river here that Joe could buy all the surrounding, see there's nobody irrigating or, or farming that right around him, but Joe can buy all that. But the stream's not big enough to support that. But, but this stream is. But then you got Andy sitting there owning the land which owns the water. So you've got that dynamic. Then you've got Larkin sitting in the back, upstream, not the back. You're sitting at the top of the watershed. Now, 
she could double the pivots. Well, one, two, three, four, five. She could times it by five what she's watering right now. But what effect is she going to have on the gentleman beside her and the four down below her? So there's a dynamic. Every, every drought then spurs the... Um, Spurs, not the right word. Wakes um, the sleeping politician. And then he wakes up and says, oh, we're, we're out of water. Let's, let's, let's come up with a uh, management plan. Now, now this, this state right here is at a intersection. It has no water management plan, so let's, let's create one. Because, you know, 50 years ago or 20 years ago, then there was only 10 of you here in the room. Now, as you increase, then you, you issues come up. That's a nice way of putting it. When you were just there, there was no issue. When everybody around you has a need, then that becomes an issue. Let, Let's say Keith's been pumping there for 20 years and the municipality's well is right there and Keith buys that farm and wants to put a well right there. Well, that's going to have an effect. But the water belongs to that spot and who owns that spot. Now, so you're sitting at the Alabama's sitting at this intersection, and the, in, the intersection, you got one road to the right, which is restriction, which is the easy way out, versus build infrastructure. And that road is built on the principle that when we get all the rain that we want in the wintertime, but we don't need it. And in the summertime, you need it, but it's sitting in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's, that then is where the D River Farm is, or Brack Farms is, where we've built reservoirs to store that water when it's running down this stream over here, and it's, it's too much or nobody complains about anything missing. They don't even notice it because it's yesterday it was crossing the paved road. So that's when these reservoirs get reloaded. Now, as a state and a water management plan, if you recognize that, now he, here's where you turn the whole system up on top of its head. The, the, um, the state, and that's a very generic term, Can they, can a drought trigger them to trigger to regulate your use or monitor this stream flow? Let's start with stream flow. Let's say we take all the technology in the world and right here we know what the stream um, flow on average should be. So anything up here is going to affect this flow meter, whether it's a drought or whether it's your use. So <clears throat> here's where you turn it on its head. It's natural to say, let's restrict all you, so the stream flow is here the same, versus when there's a drought, it triggers government, state, whatever you want to call it, to then build infrastructure to keep the stream flow the same. So the, the gentleman prior to Annie had a, a, a page that had storing water and putting it in that stream. So it will have a certain flow at a certain time that someone deems to be the flow. But that, that's the intersection that Alabama sits at. 
is <clears throat> does an event trigger someone to tell you what to do versus an event trigger government to help you do what you do? And it's two different philosophies on how you manage water. Alabama's blessed in the sense of if I ask you to figure out how to manage Bill Gates, his annual take home. Well, <laughs> how hard would it be? I mean, we, we could all be financial geniuses at that point. Well, Alabama sits on that amount of water. It, it, as much as we talk about droughts in the summer, in the wintertime, we talk about, wow, that four-inch rain sure did get the soil wet. I can't work till spring. I mean, it's the same conversation. It, it, it's, it's as extreme as the Weather Channel, and I, I guess it was, yeah, 2012 when we all got roasted. You know, Weather Channel was out there doing drought reports. Well, you know, they send the same crew the next year to do the flood report. And I, I was, during that period, I was on a farm that was not irrigated. It was, the cotton was wilted, but the Mississippi River water was fixing to top the levee and, you know, you had sand blowouts in different places. So you had a wilted acre of cotton with a water bubbling out of the ground, wondering if the levee's going to break. So that's <clears throat> if why we, if when we sit at this intersection, um, we can see that and, and, and view um, view a day as long as 365 days or, or view a farm as big as the whole state, then the, the, the management of it, you come out with a different equation management-wise if you look at it that way. If, if California as a state stretched to the Mississippi River, then their management water plan would look a little different than it looks today. The doo -doo 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 -doo. <clears throat> there was a the the first speaker. Um, I caught what he said, and he he was he said I forget if it was negative or positive, but he was used the reference we need to build. Um, we need to build, you know, channels between us. And he was speaking figuratively in the sense of either sharing information or sharing technology and that sort of thing. Well, again, turn that on its head. We literally need to build channels between us. Literally. So... There's, again, Alabama sits at a crossroads that affects each and every one of us because you're, as we sit here now, you're either a, a consumer when you take a shower, you're a consumer of water. Whether you're a farmer, you're a consumer of water. Whether you're sitting here on the state line and you've been consuming that water, but that's, that state that has a city that has millions is not going to lose. So your water <laughs> will become more valuable per se, and a city of millions can pay more. So at, at that crossroads, then... <laughs> You, you, you get to decide, do you restrict or do you build infrastructure? I've made the argument that, it, that, that water and designing a management plan is no different than where we were when we had 
dirt roads that we walked on or jumped on our horse and rode. At some point, someone said the use or traffic here is enough. Let's get some stones and put down our main street. Let's gravel this dirt road. Let's make it wider so things can pass each other. Now, the, the, the great idea of building the grist mill here or building Pizza Hut there, that's left up to us. We don't, we don't yes, we get a business license, but, but we don't ask permission to build a Pizza Hut. That requires a license. So if you look at it in a, in a highway sense, the, the better we are at what we do, and let, let's, let's, let's say we're all irrigating farmers, the better we are at what we do, then the state should recognize that and applaud that and help us do that. It's no different than the state when, let's, any industry, pick one. We want to locate in, in South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, somewhere in the South, please. Well, I promise you we're going to say, well, let, let, look at our highway system. Look at our interstates. Look how you can commerce. You can get around. Well, that's something that attracts businesses. Well, one day the guy growing tomatoes in California may wake up one day and say, well, where in the United States can I grow tomatoes where I have water and have a state that will help get me some? And that's something that the state would be able to say, well, here, here's our management plan. It's also hard to sit, sit if we're going to go to the Supreme Court, I promise you if the, or any one of the justices, no matter how they slant when they say, okay, well, Alabama, what's your management water plan? What's your water management plan? Oh, we don't have one. Well, that, yeah, Atlanta will get the water. So, again, when you sit at the intersection, one road to just say, oh, no, what we've got here is just right. It's, 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 the, it's the philosophy of when we die, it, the world ends. We, and, and if we all just lived and retired and, you know, rode off into the sunset and picked one last round on the cotton picker, well, then what we've got works. But I promise you 500 years from now, you know, this will have all happened. And every seat in here will be full with someone using water of some sort. Now, you can get there by restricting all of that use out here so these new people can have it or we can all have it. And at that fundamental principle of getting to that spot if you base it on protecting your right to come up with a good idea and do it and help you do it then that's a good thing all right I'll end there I any questions mm -mm. Okay. well thank you for having me I guess we have uh, obviously a few minutes here. Um, I sure there's no questions for these two growers because this is the time to interact um, with two very progressive growers uh, here in the state uh, about irrigation or uh, their operations in general related to uh, grain production.
If you don't irrigate, or, or if you are considering irrigating, <coughs> adopting irrigation, or advising <coughs> partners towards irrigation management, what is limiting you? What are the main limitations that you have? What are the constraints? I really would like to hear about this. Who wants to start? Okay. <coughs> Water source. So what are you talking about? Uh, I, I've got a good many irrigation <coughs> myself, and I go all the way from wells to open streams and, and the lake, but uh, it's it's hard to get the water source. I'm drilling a well in my area, nobody's ever drilled an irrigation well. I'm from Talladega. No, I was the first one to drill an irrigation well in Talladega. We didn't even have a well driller that we <coughs> drilled the thing over a six inch hole. <laughs> we wound up getting enough water, but uh, hey, we David, let, to dry All right, let me let me ask you a question in in the people around you. That's the situation. That's a real situation. All right. Who would be opposed or support? Then the state of Alabama building enough reservoir on that basin right there to during the winter time hold all the water that everybody there needs and then maintain the stream flow all the way to the system to where it comes out. I don't see any problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of places to build reservoirs. I don't have one on my, located on my farm. And that was a problem the state was offering him to yep. build a reservoir on your farm. I had no place to build one. Well, and that's, that's the case that will be more the norm than not. The, the answer <clears throat> comes in finding those places and they're purchased and built on is that they're not um, again the you're sitting where you are because it was either good farmland or you had access to water likewise the perfect spot so that was random likewise the place to build that reservoir or upper basin storage is going to be random because nature put it there there's there's cheaper spots to do what you need done for everybody up there. Well, there is, and, and I don't know what uh, the piping of the water, or the channels you're talking about from from main rivers. It looks to me like that would be possible. Now, I know we have riparian rights and all this kind of stuff. That, that see, the, in you mentioned rap riparian, and and that that's the good in the system. That's what allows you and I to do what we do. But everybody in here is drinking a glass of water that came from somewhere else. I, I, I promise you <laughs> uh, that. Um, and if, if you're an industrial user, the water didn't come from underneath the concrete in the Toyota plant. It came from somewhere else. So, again, at that crossroad, you have to then, one of those blinking lights or cautions is, the riparian rights from here, if, if, if that's the perfect spot to build the reservoir and the water's right there, but rip, riparian right is between it, then that's one of the decisions or one of, the, not one of, it's in the top two. I think um, Dennis has hit on a couple of good points. First, hey, the state water plant is going to help the layout of some of stuff. I know it's in the works in the near future. Um, another thing is I've heard talk of some of the kind of the channelized reservoirs and everything else. And uh, you need this. So, you know, some of the channelized reservoirs and everything else, 
putting them in where they become more of a community reservoir. You know, like in your case, on your particular farm, your particular area, there's not, um, you can't build one there. But maybe there's some spot somewhere in between that you can get water rights from a large source. I don't know your particular area, but maybe a large river, large reservoir, and you channelize some water down to that region, and then there's multiple producers in that region that are drawing off of that channel, off of that reservoir that's built or something else. You know, that's worked in some other area, and, and that's talk that I've heard you know, from a couple of different sources here. I don't, I don't know if that'll happen, if that won't happen. That might be one of the best options here because I think one of the obvious problems is, and you hit on it, is you don't, you know, you don't have access potentially to any surface water close to you. Obviously, your groundwater is uh, pretty costly to get and not, you know, not ideal as it could be in some other, you know, some other places. So it's things that we have to look at. I think Dennis's whole talks, we got to look at the crossroads that we're coming into the future how we're going to manage it, how we're going to set it up. You start looking at the infrastructure for stuff like this. You want to do a good job with it, like I mentioned up front, to make sure that you kind of build that bulletproof plan so that when stuff comes up, you've already got that background, you've got the plan there, everything else. So uh, I, want, I want to add something to what he said and what I said, and I don't want to leave the impression that it would be wrong. What I don't want you to walk out of here and think is, oh, the state's going to come build something for me to irrigate with. Absolutely not. You're going you're gonna to be who you already are, which is David with a pivot. And there's a minimum stream flow right there that's being jeopardized. So do we restrict David? Or do we help David do what he's already been doing so the minimum flow still flows? Now, if someone moves in right there and reduces that minimum flow more, and he has a perfect spot for a reservoir, and he has an effect. Well, to, fi to fix that effect, still the reservoir may need to be built way up there, and it come by you to get to here. But it's, but it's not to... Um, Governor Bentley, I, I want to irrigate this farm. Come do it for me. Absolutely not. It's when government puts a restriction on, we as citizens say, no, <laughs> you're going to take the tax paid money that I just paid you and help the problem that you just told me we have. That's what, that's, that's what I want to leave with you. Dennis, I think it's important that we all stay at the table and we all have a say because Dick McNider said to me, like, we're working on some water policies and will you abide by those? And I said, wait a minute. I said, if you want me to go along with it, I need to be at the table to help make those policies and I need to be included. And don't you all say, well, Dennis and Annie can do it and we'll come up with whatever they, you know, they say we'll do because we're going to look after ourselves and you know, you need to be looked after too. We all need to be capable of going to the meetings and going and having a say and really speaking up and letting them hear what our opinions are. You heard what I've done and what Dennis has done, but everybody in here has a stake in this, so don't hesitate to say, well, I, they won't listen to me because everybody has a say, so please, you know, don't hesitate. All right, let me piggyback on that. If I was to leave you with an impression, I want this to be it along with maybe some others, but you sitting there right now on your farm have rights. Don't give them up. You, again, in, in 500 years, you can fill every seat in here and everybody have rights and have water. I'm saying you don't have to give yours up so that seat can be filled one day with someone else. So rest assured, Annie and I will look after our rights because they're very personal to us. <laughs> and if you have the same philosophy as we do, You'll benefit from it. It makes a better statement 
as Annie would say, if we're all at the table and there's more voices saying, no, this, this is, we, we like our Constitution as it is. We want to build on it, not carve away from it. Dennis, I'll add something to that. Um, this about 15 years ago, I was involved in a. About 15, I think it was about 15 years ago, I was involved in a study, and I don't remember the funding source. It may have been TVA, but it may not have been. It may have been another grant. But I live in um, northern Alabama, particularly in Lawrence County, it's on the south side of the Tennessee River, and the northern third of Lawrence County is undeveloped for the most part. There, there are very few municipalities of any some crossroads kind of towns, but it's pretty agricultural or, or woods. So if there's ever a spot, and, and the river is two miles across on our northern boundary, lots of water. And so there was a study done taking um, water in a big enough pipe down in a, in a couple of different physical configurations through that chunk of the county, to not, no, no treatment, just water, and then fish boning off of it and serving all the acres. A couple of things came up that I think is just interesting to know about irrigation in wide areas. One, in an agricultural part of this state, intensely farmed at that point and still is, with, with not a lot of interference from, from towns, only a small fraction of the acres are actually in cultivation. So the efficiencies of the service are way down under any system we could come up with in a physical location of piping. So it became very expensive on a per acre basis. Correct. No matter how we design the system, theoretically. With the best possible huge water source across the whole northern boundary of the county. Second, politically, it's much, it's, it, was, it became very important to further the conversations at that point. This is where it died. No individual farmer or group of farmers could do it as individuals, so, but the creation of a water district would have been required. Correct. So as you talk, as the room becomes aware of this political issue, drainage basins and water districts that make sense from geography, topography, and other things were going to become probably the vehicles that need to be formed, should be formed, could be formed to enter into the conversation effectively. Inter individual farms have very little chance. Collections of people who are, have a common interest in a common watershed and are willing to govern themselves on an issue are much more effective at the table. So those are my comments. To what Larkin said, she's correct. A, if you came forward as a water district, we as a group of 10 farmers that represent 90% of the acreage, we want to form a water district. We'll put up all the money for the pivots. We'll manage it. We need state and federal monies to then develop the rest, which is the movement of water. That's the, if there's a spectrum, that's the big end of the spectrum. And then you have <clears throat> the, the lower end being just me, Dennis, and this lady have a um, water issue and a reservoir right there fixes it. You know, if you want to go as small as you can get to as large as you can get. When you get where Larkin is, then you start getting into things like when, when Atlanta wanted, to, wanted the Tennessee River, well, they still want it, no different than L.A. wants the Mississippi River. If then our legislators hustle and pass a um, no inner basin transfer law j j to prevent jumping you know, if, th if this is the Tennessee River and we want to pump it up there to Lawrence County, well, there's, there's two basins we've got to cross. So we're going to pass that law in, to buffer Atlanta. But in, our, in the meantime, we stifled water development in that area that she's describing. Yeah, the, the question he was asking about, are there dollars still out there to help build reservoirs? And I, I don't know the answer for this fiscal year. Um, I, the last, I know the last farm bill had it in it. 
Now, we've got a new farm bill. Whether it's in it or not, I don't know. Someone in here may know. Um, but, but there were cost share. And I, I, almost, I want to hedge and say yes because there were discussions on, well, what, what was good and bad with the first one? How do we make corrections? The answer is yes. Because there was not money there, or for another reason. Okay. We, we did not have the program this past year. Okay. We're going to make an announcement probably in January that we will have some cost share. It's a new program that replaced the AWIP program. Okay. So um, I believe um, that sponsors are Alpha and. Um, University of Alabama. Do you know how many dollars got out of it? Do you know if it was more than the last program? It, 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 yes, Steve will know more about this than I do. So, less, but it was applied for under the resource, under the Regional Conservationist Partnership Program, which Alpha and the State Soil Water Conservation Committee applied for. Okay. Okay. So there will be some funding available <laughs> in the next in, few years, but the amount will be announced in January. All right, that brings up Again, a, uh, a fundamental platform to build off of, which ties in with what Larkin was asking. It's one thing to allocate money to future reservoirs that we don't know exist. It's another thing to bring a $30 million plan to the table that says, let's build this infrastructure and this is what we're going to do with it and this is the economic benefit that's going to go along with it. Here it is. <laughs> that, that's two different worlds. Um, I've argued it, it's easier to live in the world of reality than, than hypotheticals. It, we could talk all day about interbasin transfers all day. <laughs> but you could have a real good conversation in about 10 minutes if we said, I want to send water across this hill to you. Because all the variables are known. So that, again, that's a blinking light at that intersection. Do you build a, here it is. Do you build a water management plan around reality or do you build it around hypotheticals? The reason we don't have one now is you can't build it around hypotheticals. There's, there's too many. You can't say, Alabama, come up with a water plan. Okay, well, you know, where do you start? I, I never understood why they made that so specific. Why didn't they include, like, uh, being able to drill wells? Okay. Helping, helping you on a well situation. You mean the first A well? I'm talking about the reservoir. Now you can only get money to do a reservoir. You couldn't get money to drill a well. Because at that intersection, prior to it existing, you, you had to start somewhere. It was based on water conservation, and we're competing for dollars out west where they're paying folks money to not irrigate. And so this program was based on efficiency, and this was trapping runoff in reservoirs. So there again, it, uh, the it subsurface was, aquifers, and less pressure on them. It was very sellable as in the sense of let, let's capture runoff in the winter and store it on upland basins where there's uh, less studies that have to go on if you're in lower basins. And, and so it, w it was a great starting point which then leads to, well, the next one, let's include wells and build on that. <coughs> All right, is that it? Did you, did you have? Yeah. Okay, are you familiar with the past year, the federal EPA wanted to garner control of all surface water in the United States? And that's been a battle going on. Yeah. And uh, it's not happened yet, but if you develop a state water management, doesn't it get usurped by the federal then if they decide that they want to do it? Yeah, I, I think, you know, in a general sense, I think, yes, the federal government can trump anything. So with that, that being said, 
Now, does that stop us as a state or stop us as an individual from doing what we do? I'd, I'd say no. I would also say if it's whether it's the EPA or anybody else that's concerned about the water all the way up the, the ditch on the side of the road to your downspout to your gutter, they're not trying to help you and they don't have your interest in mind. Um, That it? I think as the unofficial timekeeper, I'll kind of end it right there <laughs> for us. Um, uh, I certainly appreciate the discussion that uh, everybody provided, and uh, we're going to be on break, and we'll start back here at 335, but let's, let's thank our speakers there uh, for their uh, valuable input.